no puede ser posible. Acapulco está destruido. On October 25th, 2023, Hurricane Otis, a Category 5 hurricane, made landfall on Mexico's Pacific coast. 24 hours earlier, Otis had been categorized as a mere tropical storm. Weather forecasters got it wrong, and the cyclone left at least 48 people dead and caused billions of dollars worth of damage. We know forecasts aren't perfect, but the models did not handle this well. As the world gets warmer, the climate is becoming more volatile. More than two million people were killed due to extreme weather events in the last 50 years. We're going to have more floods, more droughts. But as extreme weather gets worse, the deaths caused by it don't have to rise in lockstep. Seeing what's coming and warning people can save lives. The problem is, not all countries have the tools to predict the weather accurately. Accurate weather forecasting in terms of human life is only going to get more valuable. Kutatu, masese reivi, nuna kamvula kananza jini. Kuta kana kuya pole 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 pole. Badala ya pale, maji ya mingi kakuya sasi. Ikakuya huku ngambo, ikakuya na huku ngambo, baka kosha fasi ya pita. Kubatu benye balifariki mfamili ya yangu pale, ikabeba bitu yote na mali, na mafungo, na bitu yote. Kisi bili kwa kamule mnyumba na nyumba zote, zote, zote zikakuwa mdispari. In May 2023, torrential rains in the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda caused floods and landslides that swept away thousands of homes. In the DRC alone, at least 400 people died. Kila mtu mwenye alikuwa ameigama mvula ile siku alikufu. Kila mtu alikuwa anatembea alikufu. Jean de Dieu's loss reflects the tragedy that can happen when extreme weather isn't accurately predicted. Like the DRC, many countries can't always forecast the weather reliably. The main issue is funding. The, the funding is not available to train people or build capacity of people to the right level. There's a lot of infrastructure in the global north, but the institutions in the global south that should be responsible or are responsible for the weather and the infrastructure do not have the ability to retain human resource and infrastructure. Weather observations have historically been taken from weather stations and radars on the ground. The more of them there are, the clearer the picture that can be used to make a weather forecast. The problem is, Weather stations and radar are expensive. There are far, far, far fewer weather stations throughout the global south. In fact, weather stations in many parts of Africa have actually been declining in recent years. It's just not feasible for every country to implement the number of ground weather stations that you would need to really make sure that your entire country is, is safe and is actually being, uh, being forecasted. Weather satellites that divide the Earth's atmosphere into grids providing average climatic conditions for each square, offer additional forecasting ability. But they also have limitations. Number one, the satellite data is not enough in terms of resolution. Number two, the ground data can give you information which you cannot get from the satellite data. But while ground data remains unaffordable to many, disruptors are helping to close the observation gap. There are a couple of companies with their own weather stations, companies that will fly drones into areas that they are interested in. There are various ways that they will try and supplement the data available to them via sort of normal public organizations. One approach being tried by Tomorrow.io, an American startup, is even more ambitious. It's really democratizing access to weather for those countries that might not be able to have or implement the number of ground radar stations that would be needed. The company is aiming to make weather observations more affordable by taking radar readings from space. Three, two, one, ignition and liftoff. 
current weather satellites struggle to see through clouds. But affordable weather satellites equipped with radar that can penetrate clouds could prove to be transformational. As governments and agencies start to use our data and our satellites, we're going to get so much better at being able to forecast weather and implement early warning systems. Improving observations is one thing, but turning that data into forecasts is another. Here, new tech can help as well. Private companies are increasing the accuracy of global weather forecasts, and the arrival of AI has upped the ante. You've got a series of models that have been released by companies like Google DeepMind, NVIDIA, Huawei, um, which have actually done a pretty good job of forecasting the weather as accurately and much, much faster than the massive international institutions. Weather forecasting is a natural fit for big companies with computing know-how. But it's not just big tech who think they can disrupt the business of predicting meteorological conditions. AI meteorology allows us to achieve a new standard of accuracy and detail and performance. AI is unlikely to completely replace numerical weather forecasting, the most familiar form of weather modeling. But it is shaking things up. Uganda now has an AI-based forecasting computer capable of predicting the weather for an entire country. The government has rented it from Atmo, an American startup that is part of an AI gold rush in weather forecasting. Results from their system have yet to be published, but Uganda was attracted in part by the low price tag. It has been affordable and accessible enough that almost any country or region that wants one of these forecasts can get one. AI might help countries in the global south to produce more accurate weather forecasts at a cost they can afford but ground-based observations remain critical. AI is not a magic fix for lack of forecasting tools or equipment, but AI can complement the conventional methods. But more accurate forecasts are only useful if that information gets to the people who need it. A big victim of climate change will be uh, farmers in poor countries. One thing that is probably going to be fairly cheap to do better on is weather data. Anything we can do to help them with extreme weather, where you're going to have more floods, more droughts, helping them is probably the biggest climate adaptation thing that we need to do. Smallholders with farms of under two hectares produce around a third of the world's food supply and are some of the most at risk of bad weather. In Kenya, a collaboration between the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Tomorrow Now, a weather forecasting nonprofit, and the Kenyan government provides farmers with text updates on the weather. They use Tomorrow.io's AI to turn the forecasts into advice. A farmer needs to understand when it's going to rain, understand what the temperature levels will be. And, you know, for their various crops, that'll determine when they plant, when they harvest, or do they go out and provide some protection uh, to the crops. Being able to get public data streams that are mapped into really good weather prediction out to them through their cell phone is a, a huge benefit. They're not the only ones texting smallholders. In Uganda, where over 70% of the population depends on rain-fed agriculture, a UN-sponsored scheme to modernize weather monitoring and alert systems has been a boon to local farmers. And it's not just agricultural workers who benefit from better access to weather forecasts. You have uses in all sectors. Farmers is just one. More accurate weather forecasts are definitely crucial for everyone particularly when the worst happens. Jean isn't alone. 
Three out of every four people on the planet have a mobile phone, but only around half their countries have a system to warn them of disasters. The stakes are enormous because when we're talking about things like early warning systems, you are talking about the ability to move lives and livelihoods out of harm's way in case of an active ongoing disaster, which you know, is incredibly critical and is also really the thin end of the wedge in terms of adapting to climate change in a world where disasters are going to be increasingly common. The World Bank and others estimate that improving weather forecasts and early warning systems could have benefits worth $162 billion a year. More importantly, an estimated 23,000 lives per year could also be saved. Weather impacts quite literally every single thing that humans do, from the way that crops are grown, to how sports matches turn out, to how wars are fought, to how businesses move across cities. Climate change is going to make the weather more extreme and more variable in a lot of places, which means that the impact of weather on day-to-day -day life is going to become more acute. In many cases, that also means an increased prevalence of disasters, which means an increased risk to human life and well-being. Thanks for watching. To read more of The Economist's climate change coverage, click the link and don't forget to subscribe.